Okay, we have returned another integral from the MIT Integration Me 2024. This was lightning round number one. We have the integral from zero to one of one minus x to the three halves, all to the three halves, minus one minus x to the two thirds, all to the two thirds, dx. Okay, I know two good methods for this one. I think I'm gonna try to do them both. So to get started with this, I wanna look at these two things separately because we've split up here on a minus sign. So first, just looking at this, I wanna take a look at a graph and just keeping it very rough because we don't care exactly what it looks like yet. Now looking at our endpoints for this, we wanna look at x values between zero and one. When x is gonna be zero, you plug that in and this function is gonna be at one. And then you look at the other endpoint when x equals one, well then you plug one in here and you're gonna get zero. So we have the other endpoint here. When x is one, this is gonna be zero. And then next we'll look at our second function and we'll just evaluate it the same way. So looking at it when x equals zero, Again, that's gonna happen at one. And then when we plug in, we look at the other endpoint when x is equal to one. Again, that's gonna be zero. So our graph, we don't know, but it's gonna be something like this. Probably not that crazy, but something like that. And of course, because the integral is gonna be the area under the curve, we can kind of visually see right now that it's probably a small area, the difference between these two curves. For the problem, we really wanna get an exact solution. So the estimate's not really helping us. But now we do have something for this case. What we can do is if these two functions, if these are inverses of each other, then we can actually know exactly what this area is gonna be. The difference is gonna be zero. The graph is gonna look a little different if these are inverses. What'll happen if these two functions are inverses? It'll look something like this because for inverses, they're gonna be reflected around the y equals x line that we have here in red. And so you can kind of see it visually here that the area and the curve is gonna be the same for both these. And then in that case, the integral is gonna be zero. And so now I just need to show that these are inverses in order for this to work. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just set the first one here equal to y. And then in order to determine the inverse, what I can do for this is just swap the variables. So I can write this as x equal to one minus y three halves to the three halves. And then all I need to do is just solve for y in order to get our inverse. So first let's take the two thirds power on both sides. So I'll take two thirds power here and two thirds power here. That way, when we multiply this in, these powers are gonna cancel. And then just solving for y three halves, we end up with one minus x two thirds. But then I can take the two thirds power on both sides, take the two thirds power here, multiplying that in, powers are gonna cancel, and we have, this is our y. But this right here, this is exactly the same as the second part here. So by doing this, we found the inverse of this is just gonna be the second part. So this holds, and so our integral is gonna be just zero. Okay, now for my second method, what I wanna do is use the beta function on this, just using this formula that we have over here to the right. This is kind of a lesser known version of this because we have this exponent on the x, which makes it a little more tricky. But what I need to do first is let's split this up into two integrals. So for the first one, and what I'm actually gonna do is I need to create this term right here because we just have the one minus x, we don't have this. So to do that, I'll create that as x to the zero because x to the zero is just one. And then we have this first one. So the other thing I'm gonna need is this n value here, just noticing we get that n value here and here. So that's just gonna be the exponent on the x. So I'll create that out front. So we can do is create a three halves, but so I'm not changing it, I'll multiply by two thirds. So now this is just a one in front. And then we'll do the exact same thing on the second integral. Again, here's gonna be our, here's our n value. So we'll have two thirds in front and I'll multiply by three halves. So I'm just multiplying by one there. I'll create the x to the zero again. This is gonna become one minus x to the two thirds to the two thirds dx. But now from here, I wanna take this x to the zero and get it in this format. So what I can do to rewrite this, we're gonna have, we still have x as the base. We have this n value in there, so we need three halves. But again, if I multiply three halves by two thirds and then subtract one, then we have one minus one, the exponent is still zero. And then I can kind of do the same exact thing over here. We have this two thirds that we need. We can multiply by three halves and subtract one. So again, this is X to the zero. And then next I want to get these exponents here in this format of Z two minus one. So that's easy to fix. What we can do is for three halves, I can rewrite three halves as, I can write this as five halves minus one. And then doing the same thing over here, I can write two thirds as five thirds minus one. But now at this point, we've got everything we need to use this formula here. We have our Z2 values here and here, and we have our Z1 value 
right here and the other one's right here. So we can go to the formula, but we need to bring these constants up front because remember our formula applies to this part and this part. So here we're gonna have this two thirds in front Then going to the formula gamma of Z1 is gonna be gamma of two thirds. And then here we're gonna have this other part, we're gonna have gamma five halves. And then the denominator, we're gonna have the gamma of the sum of these two. If you add those up and get a common denominator, this is gonna be gamma of 19 over six. And then for the second part, we've got this constant up front, so we're gonna have three halves here. And then go into the formula, gamma of this first piece, we're gonna have gamma three halves times gamma of this other one, five thirds. And if you add that up, you actually get the same denominator as you got here. It's gonna be gamma of 19 over six. But now from here in order to simplify this, there's a formula I wanna use. We have this formula, gamma of n plus one. This is just the same principle really as a factorial, but for gamma of n plus one, I can write this as n times gamma of n. And so as it turns out, if you look right here and also right here, what you have is you have the right side here of this where we have like three halves as our n values. We have the same value here and here and then same thing here with two thirds. And so what I can do to simplify these is just do this in reverse. So we'll want an n plus one value. So like here where our n value is two thirds, then I can rewrite this as n to the five thirds. And then I'll just copy the other stuff. And then next doing the same thing on this thing, we'll want our n plus one value, three halves plus one gives me gamma of five halves here. And then this is gonna be gamma of five thirds all over gamma 19 over six. But then we have a common denominator all set up and actually this is the same thing as this in a different order. So when you subtract these, you just get our final solution of just zero. Okay, there you have it. Interesting problem from MIT 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.